You are listening to the Unsoberly Sober Show. I'm your host, Magnify Maggie. This podcast will turn your perception of going sober upside down. We're going to be working from the inside out to get you that dream life. So make sure you stick around for the end of the episode where I'm going to walk you through our weekly positive pursuit exercise to begin rewiring that beautiful mind, baby. Are you ready to talk about something that you will not hear on any other sobriety podcast? I promise you, I have searched far and wide and all of those other things are literally talking about how many days you got, counting your days of sobriety, don't drink, how did you learn not to drink, all of these things. But today we're actually going to break down the pros and cons that I've learned that I've experienced through the reintroduction of alcohol back into my life and practicing true, successful, healthy moderation. I know this will ruffle some feathers. I know that this sounds backwards to a lot of people because we've been conditioned to believe that once you have a problem with alcohol, you are going to be permanently stuck in this problem lifestyle with alcohol, that you have to fight tooth and nail to avoid it and manipulate your circumstances and your environment so that you're not even exposed to it because God forbid you slip up and you have one drink. The self-image that all of this culture creates is a lack of self-discipline so that if by gosh, you choose to be an adult and have one beverage, it does always turn into 50. It always turns into having too many. Um, But that's really just a conditioning that really is just a, a self image that I think the traditional narrative perpetuates. And I had to challenge that narrative because I did not want to live my life fearing that if I have one drink that I'm going to end up becoming my old self and going from a lapse in sobriety to a relapse in sobriety. And there's a huge difference between those two. We'll break it. We'll break that down today. But again, I wanted this to be about my experiences in reintroducing alcohol and that timeline and what I've learned and how that's even shifted for me after four, almost five years of this. So uh, to kind of call back into the mind, I've covered a little bit of my history before, but, um, you know, I went sober for the majority of 2020. Again, I did not count my days. I did not build my identity off of, I've been sober for 360 days. It was just me building the life that kept my mind occupied outside of alcohol so that if the idea of alcohol came to mind, the idea or the image of somebody drinking was in my environment, it didn't sound so appealing. So I spent a lot of time building my new identity, figuring out what the hell I like to do outside of going to the bar, figuring out what I love about myself other than being party girl Maggie and kind of grieving this passing of my old self. I had to go through that grieving process and going back to like the toxic X episode, I had to ensure that I wasn't going into rooms sitting around talking about alcohol because that would be exactly like breaking up with a toxic ex, but going into a room and talking about them for a whole year year or for the rest of your life expecting to fall out of love with them, but you continue to talk and talk and talk about them, guess what? You're going to continue to identify and relate things to that, right? So with all of that said, this is how it went down. After about six, eight months of my alcohol vacation, I started to really see that my experience was so different Then what I saw in my mom, she had a few sobriety stints where she was clinging on to AA and the 12 steps, but uh, I believe I saw her make it about nine months when I was 11. Um, In those nine months, it was every single day, I didn't drink, but God damn it, I want to drink. It was every day, I need to go to AA or else I'm going to cave in. And then when she got back from AA, she was even more depressed. So I saw all of these things through the traditional model. And then what I was experiencing in 2020 was the opposite. It was like, I don't love alcohol. I don't 
identify as somebody who has a problem anymore. I'm confident that if I reintroduce alcohol back into my life, that I would never let it get to the point that it was before. I'm not that same person. I'm not that same party girl Maggie. I've grown into healthy, fit role model Maggie. And in that, I just had this overwhelming curiosity to see if what I was doing was it. If what I was doing was, so to say, the cure. And I figured that all of the other data pointed in the direction of it was my cure. I cured myself by becoming my authentic self, by figuring out what I love and building confidence and discipline and self-esteem. Is this model so amazing that I could reintroduce alcohol and stand firm remaining in my new identity. So after it was about a year, I'd say after about a year, I decided to have a drink and this is what happened. Nothing. (laughs) It remained one drink. I used to be famous for uh, pre-gaming. Once we ordered our first drink at the bar or at the fancy restaurant, I was two or three drinks ahead of everybody else because I literally, as soon as it touched the table, I was gulping it about three quarters full. I was asking for my next drink. Uh, If people weren't drinking fast enough with me, then uh, I would say I'm going to the bathroom and I'd slide past the bar and be like, hey, give me a real quick shot of Jameson because I was literally chasing that party identity. I was chasing that high. And when I reintroduced alcohol, I was in a great state of mind. I had goals that anchored me and connected me into my life that kind of communicated to my mind that you don't want to be out of control anymore. That's all I wanted back then. But now I want to be grounded. I want to be present in my life. I had to build that life. So as we're going through this, understand that moderation is only going to be attainable when you do build that new identity, when you do have those new goals to anchor you in the present moment so that you're not drinking away the past or drinking just to, you know, fit what you think other people expect you to be. So these were the things that I experienced, the pros and cons. When I first reintroduced alcohol and I had that one drink and I stopped and I had a slight buzz, I felt a little warmth. I would actually also say that uh, my perception of, of how strong drinks were really changed. It was either my tolerance going down or um, the fact that I wasn't used to being drunk anymore. That one drink, it hit me and I was like, I don't want to be slurring my words. I don't want to be careless. I don't want to be sloppy. So that really was like this self-regulating governor within me. But um, what was really, I guess, a positive experience out of it was I can be a normal person. I can have the choice that if I want to have one, it's there and that I don't need to avoid it at all costs or fear it. Remember, any idea, whether feared or revered, if emphasized and held in the mind, will begin to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate physical form available. So because I was not fearing alcohol, it had no power over me and would not manifest into being careless and out of control with it and avoiding the the reality that it was fucking up my life, you know? So... Without that fear, I had this safety of I can have one and say no. And when you go from somebody who believes that you cannot control it, that once you have one, you have to have 20. When you go from that self-image to I'm somebody who can have one drink and stop Your self-esteem goes through the roof. Again, I'm not trying to promote people going back to drinking if you're happy and healthy in your sober lifestyle. But I'm telling people, if you are so afraid of going after sobriety because of forever sobriety and the traditional culture of having to avoid it and never be around it and run away from it at all costs, 
that doesn't have to be the case. And if that's what's holding you back from trying sobriety, I want to myth bust the shit out of it because if that's what's holding you back, that can't be an excuse any longer because here is exhibit A and I've got a whole roster of clients and the sober experimenters, all of this evidence showing that there's a different path to learning how to reintroduce it, but it doesn't ever show up the same way. So the pro, the first pro was I can drink and it was actually really fun because it wasn't all about where's the next drink. It was all about, okay, I'm able to be part of the group. I don't have to feel like I'm sitting on the sidelines because, quote unquote, I have a problem. The problem narrative was completely dispelled. I cured that problem. I think that something else that is a pro with you know, initially reintroducing it is that you just have this confidence that you don't have to introduce yourself to everybody as I'm sober. And for so many people, yes, we can grow into that confidence. I've mentioned that before. I've grown into being able to introduce myself and be like, hi, I'm Maggie. Oh, you guys are going to get drinks now. I, I don't really drink. I'm, I'm sober. Like that has slipped off my tongue. Uh, and felt natural. But I think for the most part, when people first start off, they're very uncomfortable telling people that they're sober. Uh, they're very uncomfortable with that identity. So not having to identify and spell yourself out as I'm a sober person, indicating to your mind, maybe this preconceived notion that sobriety goes hand in hand with having a problem with alcohol. It doesn't impact your or take a hit to your self-esteem the same way. So not having to introduce myself or tell my life story about why I don't drink, it made it really comfortable for me to then be able to pay attention to the conversation and be present, which was a new aspect because when I was, I'm 100% sober mindset, especially in my very early 2020 stint, I didn't feel present sitting around with people because I was thinking, don't drink, don't drink, don't drink. Oh, why can they drink? How can they drink? They're fine with it. I wasn't present. And then before I wasn't present either because all I was thinking about was my next drink. I was looking for the waiter, the waitress, the bartender. How can I sneak away and get a shot? We get home from the bar and I was taking sneaky shots behind our bar. Um, so the ability to be present and not be letting alcohol be the star of the show, whether you're fearing it or revering it. It transitions into a revere for the connection that you have. As I'm talking about the pros of alcohol, I just want to teach a second on this. Um, alcohol was introduced into society a very, 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 very long time ago as a positive tool for some. Yes, there were um, historical, there, there is historical evidence that alcohol was also given to soldiers to uh, keep the, the morale up and kind of keep them in a daze, keep the low society people numb to the fact that they're not getting the greatest things in life. Yes, that is a story, but here's another aspect of alcohol and how it was introduced in spirituality. It was introduced as a tool to set the conscious mind aside. So the worried mind, the stressed mind, the, oh my God, what do people think about me, the inhibited mind. Alcohol was introduced as a tool with spiritual leaders in spiritual realms to help people expand their level of consciousness by setting it aside and tapping into higher frequencies, tapping into the subconscious mind, to uh, mend behavior, to create better beliefs, things of that nature. You can look this up. It's been studied. So with that being said, in this time, I learned to use alcohol in that way as a tool. This is a pro of moderation. And in, you know, your quest for healthy long-term moderation, think about this. So when I would have my one drink, because then again, when they introduce it in a spiritual way, it was not getting toe up from the flow up. It was not 10 drinks deep. It was one serving, half a serving, maybe two servings. Um... When I had that one drink, I was able to sit back and notice how free my conversation flowed. And I wasn't at the point of slurring 
or being sloppy or not being me, but I was at this point where my inhibitions were lowered, the unnecessary inhibitions. Like, what if I say something wrong? And what if they're judging me? And what if, you know, all of these things of needing to be perfect, needing other people's approval, all these things that I learned as a kid, alcohol did help me in that little tiny buzz state. Alcohol helped me see what is it that I like to talk about when I'm not shit hammered. With a little bit of a buzz, I realized I love to talk around a table about healthy habits. I love to talk about, you know, people are always talking about food. We're sitting there at a dinner table or at a restaurant. People are like, I wonder if I ordered something good for me. And, you know, I'd go off on like helping them talk about protein or I'd talk about, you know, their experiences, what's going on in their life. And I was curious because I wasn't feeling like, do they feel like I'm interrogating them? So I say all of this because... Alcohol was a tool for me to see what is it that I naturally like to talk about. And then without alcohol, the next time I went out and I didn't have a drink, I said, what was it that I talked about last time that I had so much fun talking about? Oh, yeah. And so I'd bring up those same topics. So in introducing one drink here or there, it actually made me more confident in my natural state to say, this is what I love to talk about because I'm going to be real. And you might feel this too. Without a drink, do you ever just draw blanks when you're around people? Like the social anxiety is overwhelming. You don't know what the heck to have flowing out of your mouth. Well, in this case, that did help me because it laid those inhibition, it lowered those inhibitions and allowed me to see what do I actually feel good conversating with and seeing also that it didn't have to turn into those sneaky shots. It never went back and reverted to those things. So those are a few of the pros. I think understanding that alcohol can be a tool just like anything in life. Um, you know, the introduction of ayahuasca and psilocybin, those things can be used as tools with the right mindset in the right environment. But if you're just using it recreationally for fun all the time, you're depending on it for fun, it's the same thing with any kind of substance. It can be used as a tool, but if you grow to depend on it, to be that fun person and to conversate, then of course you're going to forget how to do it without it. So it was almost like teaching me baby steps of what am I interested in outside of alcohol, using alcohol as a tool to learn and to allay that social anxiety. I've, and to this day, I still have social anxiety because I was born with a lot of these sensitive issues and in, in that environment. So the cons, I will say, <laughs> the things that I've realized about moderation uh, that kind of blew my mind. Here's one. Just because you can moderate does not mean that you are immune to the consequences of alcohol. Let's say you are living happy in your alcohol freedom and you have a lapse in sobriety, meaning that you make a decision to have a few drinks one night, not a relapse because a relapse means that you basically go back to the old way. You drink the same as you did and it it perpetuates into days or weeks on end where you're back in the same condition you were before. A lapse is like what I'm mentioning. I decide to have a drink and I say, I don't care about my days. I'm just going to have a drink. I make that decision. So uh, when you make that decision to lapse in your sobriety, you're still going to feel like crap the next day. Wah, wah, wah. This is what I've learned. And this is actually what has helped me Become somebody who can intrinsically decide if I want to have a drink versus trying to force willpower. Don't drink today. Don't do it. Well, what's helped me more is as I reintroduced it and I was using alcohol very sparingly, it was like, yes, I'm a normal person. I can have fun with it and I don't take it to the limit and I'm not party girl Maggie. Yay. But that does not mean that alcohol isn't going to affect your sleep. That does not mean that alcohol is not going to give you anxiety. Even if you did nothing wrong the night before, the nature of alcohol will make you feel anxious the next day. Hangover anxiety. It has to do with what's called our GABA rebound, our dopamine levels. There's all of these things that hormonally happen when we drink alcohol. And even if you are healthfully moderating, you will still experience those things.
Even if you're not doing something crazy like texting your ex or uh, dancing on tables or doing something where you, you know, it's an obvious regret, uh, you're going to wake up and you're going to feel anxious. And for me, it became this, this scale of weighing things out. Okay, is being able to have fun with a drink or two worth feeling depressed and anxious tomorrow. The narrative was no longer connected to you have a problem, you're going to drink or you have to not drink, which a lot of times led me to sneaky drinking. The way the mind works, we become what we think about. Um, It allowed me to see this scale. Is the fun of an hour or two worth decreasing my sleep quality, feeling extra stressed out tomorrow, not showing up for what I said I was going to do with as much energy and enthusiasm. Is it worth it? And over time, I realized it wasn't. So when I first reintroduced alcohol, I would say I was probably drinking maybe once a month, once every other month. And I kind of planned it out around like dinners or if there was a wedding or something. Um, And I still kind of felt the need to have them in those situations just for my ease and my my ability to be present and not be thinking, don't drink. Um, But over time, having that reintroduction, having those experiences helped me see even that fun that I think I'm having is not worth it. And so... I think the the cunning aspect of alcohol is that no matter how healthy of a drinker you are, you're still going to have repercussions, emotional repercussions, financial repercussions. I was still spending more on alcohol than I am now. Um, you're going to have, you know, you're not going to be immune to blackouts if you take it too far. Hopefully, you know, in a lapse with sobriety, you're not taking it to that limit. But just because you only drink once a quarter or once a year doesn't mean that you're immune to blacking out. You still have to watch your pacing. You have to watch, did I eat before? Am I in a healthy state of mind? Um, that was the other Other con that is another con that I that I experienced was, you know, if you say I'm not going to drink at all forever, you decrease your decision overload like you don't have to make decisions anymore. Am I going to drink at this function and am I going to have to deal with the anxiety the next day? If you decided not to moderate and just to go completely sober, that decision is super easy. So that's something that I still have to weigh out. But as I've experienced it more and more, now I can say, ah, yeah, this one is going to be super fun without it because I've practiced and I've shown up and I've been places without drinking to excess to the point where I know what to talk about now. And I use alcohol as a tool to help me in the beginning, but now I've done it so much naturally that I don't rely on it. And that decision has become that much easier. But in the beginning, it was still weighing it out. It was very much like, even though I was drinking one, maybe once a month, it was, okay, is it this weekend or next weekend? Uh, is it next weekend or the weekend after that? And that took a lot of brain energy, but that was one of my stepping stones to get to where I'm at. So I call it a con just because, you know, it is a drawback as far as the energy spent, you're still thinking about whether or not you're going to drink, but that decreases over time. And you just have to remember that alcohol can be used as a tool, not for encouraging and creating the fun. You have to learn how to encourage yourself to have fun and and realize that's part of your self-image, but to see it as something that can lower your inhibitions enough to learn how to do it over time without it and not be dependent on it. I would say that overall, the pros for me outweigh the con because I don't have to live my life thinking, do I have a problem? Now I, now I know confidently that I don't have a problem. And if I decide to have a drink, I can move on with my life. And I do. And There has never been an experience since I've reintroduced alcohol that we could classify as a true relapse. I've never um, 
come home and and taken sneaky shots. I, I talk about that. That was like literally my toxic pattern. Uh, my husband would say, oh, we're done. Like we had two drinks each. Like, let's just get home. And so he'd sit on the couch and I would literally like a child, go creep behind our little bar, and I would take swigs, crouch down on the floor, take swigs directly out of a room temperature bottle of whiskey, and I would keep the party going on my own. As I've reintroduced alcohol, we've had that drink out at dinner. We decide to go home, and it hit me. It was probably the third or fourth time. Uh, it hit me that I came home, and I was, like, petting my dogs and excited to be with them and drinking my water and washing my makeup off and never, ever, ever did my mind say, hey, keep drinking. Go take a swig off that bottle. Go take a sneaky shot. And that, to me, means that I intercepted that pattern, that that paradigm is no longer there. I'm no longer chasing that because I see the value and the connection of the goals I've made. And alcohol just seems irrelevant. If I decide to have one, cool. If I decide not to have one, I have just as much fun because I've practiced that. But for me and for some people out there, that might be the strategy that works best for you. Taking an extended alcohol vacation and then using alcohol as a tool to become more confident as you reimmerse yourself in your new life. So I know this goes against the grain. I know that I would be kicked out of any AA room that I walked into and talked about this, but I also know that so many of you, you've been commenting, leaving me love, sending me messages. So many of you are getting a lot of value out of this alternative conversation because you are tired of being told that sobriety is all black and all white. There is so much gray area. And this is one of those gray areas where we can really use it to your advantage and without shame or judgment, changing how we feel about the drink, uh, use it as a tool to learn and grow with, and then eventually be able to decrease the, the lean on it, the crutch on it. Um, you know, I, I was once a month, maybe back in 2021. Now I haven't had a drink 2024. I can't remember towards the end of 2023, maybe it was Thanksgiving. Um, with that being said, I just want to inspire you. And again, if forever sobriety is holding you back, if that idea and that concept is too scary, it doesn't have to be like that. You can make progress. You can be somebody who's in control and have a drink down the line and not let it get out of control but it all goes down to learning, practicing, experimenting. And what I've talked about here is on my end of the spectrum, everything for anybody will be highly individual, which is why I offer that one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have the program ready for you. If you're listening to this and you're like, okay, I am ready to hit the ground running, learn how to do this alcohol vacation. And then eventually the reintroduction, because that seems more attainable than forever sobriety, let's get to work. But these are also individualized. We would need to work to tailor these ideas and, and get to know you, tailor everything to you. So please, please, please use the links in the description, reach out, message me on Instagram if you need any help. And in the meantime, keep listening to all the positive things you can, anything that gives you hope, inspiration, motivation, keep the positive vibes going and uh, keep thinking differently in order to drink differently or never again. Remember, it all goes down in the mind. It means the entire world to me that you have been here with me, letting me share my experiences and hopefully helping open your eyes to a bright, beautiful life ahead of you as well. So if you are loving this show, please, please, please subscribe, like, comment, and especially share this with somebody that might be in need. Please help get the word out. Word of mouth is so important. And I know that you're somebody special who can help me in this mission for thinking differently in order to drink differently or never again. Make sure you reach out if you have any questions you want discussed on the podcast. I'm here for it. So I'll talk to you soon. Signing out, Magnify Maggie.